how to convert the equation of a line from standard form to point slope form. This tutorial can be found on our website mathwarehouse.com slash line where you'll find a bunch of other goodies including free worksheets with answer keys, interactive applets, and many other practice problems. Alright, but the goal of this tutorial is to be able to look at an equation like this, 2x plus 3y equals 6, which is in standard form. On the top left here is a general idea of what standard form looks like, ax plus by equals c. And then to be able to convert that into point slope form, which in general is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and where m is the slope, and x1 and y1 are any two points on the line, or is, or any, is any point on the line. And I want to talk about something involving point slope form before we try converting them to point slope form. Consider y mi these two equations here. y minus 3 equals 2x minus 1. y minus 5 equals 2x minus 2. You'll notice they both have a slope of 2. But these are not, not only do these have the slope in common, these are the exact same line. And we can prove that by simplifying it. Let's um, add 3 to both sides to get y equals... 2 times x minus 1 plus 3, which becomes 2x minus 2 plus 3, which becomes 2x plus 1. So in the bottom equation, if we can also simplify that to be 2x plus 1, you'll know that indeed I am not lying to you that these are the same equations. Let's add 5 to both sides, and you get y equals 2x minus 2 plus 5. And then this simplifies to be 2x minus 4 plus 5. And uh, you might be seeing that indeed we get the same equation as the top one. And there's a reason I wanted to bring this issue up. In point slope form, the only thing you're locked into is the slope. Notice both of these had a slope of 2. But for x1 and y1, you can choose any two points on the line sorry, any point on the line, any x1 and y1. And at first, these equations may look a little different, like this one and this one. But it stems from the fact that all we need is a single point, x1 and y1, on the line, and the slope, and we've got point slope form. That's going to come into play later on um, in the process we're going to go through today to convert equations like this to point slope form. All right, well, let's, let's look at um, what we might need to do to get this to be in point slope form. First off, you may notice that the x's are on one side and the y's are on the other. So let's, step number one, let's isolate the y term by add the additive inverse of x. To both sides, of course, right? You keep what you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. And the additive inverse of 2x is negative 2x. Negative 2x. Basically, what we're doing is isolating the y term. Because you'll see now, y is indeed isolated all alone on the left side. And then we get negative 2x plus 6. Now, Notice in point slope form, the coefficient in front of y here is 1. It's y minus 3 and y minus 5 in these two example equations. So we need, in step number 2, we need to make the coefficient in front of y 1 instead of 3. So you're gonna, the way we can do that is by multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. And just a little refresh on what the multiplicative inverse is. If you had the number 2, the, its multiplicative inverse would be 1 half. Because when you multiply these together, you get 1. If the number was 2 thirds, it would be 3 over 2. Because again, you would get 1. If the number were negative 2 thirds, you would multiply by negative 3 over 2. Which gives you, again, 1 you would get negative 6 over negative 6. So the multiplicative inverse is easy. You just think of the number as a fraction. If it's not, think of it as 3 over 1, and then you flip it over. 
So we're going to multiply everything by one third. So it's going to be one third times three over one y equals one third times negative two plus one third times six, which gives us y equals negative two thirds. There's an x there, x plus two. Okay, so right now we know that the slope of this line is negative 2 over 3. So in terms of point slope form, we already know m, negative 2 thirds. We just need to find a single point on the line. And that goes back to the reason why I, sur I went over these two lines at the beginning. Remember, they were the same line. We just chose two different points. So, for, so we can choose any point we want. Right now, we need to find a point on this line. And we can choose any x value to find a point on the line. Now, I don't know about you, but I like x equals 0. That's going to make our lives real easy. If we choose x equals 0, all we got to do is figure out what y equals, and we have our point, x1 and y1, for the equation. So if x is 0, we just end up with y equals negative 2 thirds times 0, plus 2, or 2. So we have the point 0, 2. So now we have the slope, we have our x1 and y1, and the last step is simply to substitute these values into point slope form, into the general point slope equation. Right? Substitute. Right, so the general form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, or y minus 2 equals negative 2 thirds x minus 0. Now you could have chosen any value for, um, for x, but x equals 0 makes it so easy once you get to this step because it just is y equals the number on the end there. All right, so let's just recap the steps real fast, and then we'll practice a few problems. When you have to go from standard form to point slope form, your goal is to first add the additive inverse of the x term to both sides of the equation. Remember, we did this to isolate the y term and, and get it so that we had 3y all alone. Then multiply by the multiplicative inverse of, y, of the coefficient in front of y. So if you have 3, you need to multiply everything by 1 third. This gets you to have, be y equals. From here, you can get the slope, because if you remember your slope-intercept form, um, this number here is the slope. Then we just need one more thing for point-slope form, which is a, any point on the line. So choose any x value to find a point on the line. And the easiest x value at this point is always 0, because it pretty much just gets rid of this term, and you end up with y equals 2 in this case, then substitute into the general form of the equation. This is the slope, x1 and y1, and you're done. All right, let's practice um, a few more problems just like this, going through these four steps to convert standard form equations into their point-slope forms. Okay, let's convert 2x plus 7y equals 28 from standard to point-slope form. Remember, the first step is to find the additive inverse of the x term and add it to both sides. So if we have 2x, we, the additive inverse is negative 2x. So let's just add negative 2x to both sides. Right, and that ends up giving us 7y equals negative 2x plus 28. And after that, Remember, we want to multiply all terms by the multiplicative inverse of the coefficient of y. In other words, take 7, what's its multiplicative inverse? 1 7th. And multiply everything by 1 7th. Because, of course, this will give us a nice y equals. Because 1 7th times 7 equals 1. 1 7th times 2y plus 1 7th times 28. This gives us 2 over 7, or sorry, that was an x, 2 over 7x, 
plus 4. 1 7th times 28 is 4. Or choose it. Remember, we can choose any x we want. And why don't we make our life a little easier? Let's choose x equals 0. So we have y equals 2 over 7 times 0 plus 4, or 4. Alright, so x1 is 0, y1 is 4, so now we just have to substitute it. Equals y1 times m equals m times x minus x1, y minus y1, or 4 equals the slope. And remember, when we have it in this form here, this is y equals mx plus b, this here is the slope. 2 over 7x minus 0. And that's it. That's our equation in point slope form. Let's, uh, let's try another problem. Let's convert 3x minus 2y equals 15 to point slope form. And you know the deal. Let's find that additive inverse of our x term. And our x term is 3x, so we want negative 3x on both sides, so that we end up with negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 15. Multiply all terms by the multiplicative inverse of y. Remember, all, our goal is to have this in y equals form here, and that lets us easily find the slope which we need for our final point slope form. Remember, it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and we need that slope which we can get once we have it in y equals form. Alright, so the multiplicative inverse of negative 2, what, what, what can we multiply negative 2 by to get positive 1 as our coefficient? And the answer is the multiplicative inverse, or negative 1 half. And of course, we have to multiply everything by negative 1 half. So negative 1 half times 3 is positive 3 over 2. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive x plus negative 15 over 2. Okay, so this is y equals 3 halves x minus 15 over 2. If you prefer decimals, right, you can always think about this as, um, as 1 half x minus 7.5. So whatever, 1.5x minus 7.5, right? So you can either keep them as fractions or as decimals, whatever you prefer. Any value of x to find the point, you know the easiest value of x. We're going to make x1 equal to 0. And that means that y equals negative 15 over 2. Or if you like the decimals, negative 7.5. So x1 is 0, y1 is negative 7.5. Remember, we now substitute, taking our slope from this step when we had it in y equals mx plus b form. And now let's just let's plug them in. y minus negative 7.5 is really plus 7.5 equals m, 3 halves x minus 0. Alright, not so bad, right? Let's convert this equation on the screen, 3y minus 12x equals 24, to point slope form. Okay, you know what we're going to do. Let's get the additive inverse of the x term. The x term is negative 12x, so let's add 12x, positive 12x, to both sides. So we have 3y equals 12x plus 24. Multiply all terms by the multiplicative inverse of the y coefficient, or 3. So we must multiply everything by 1 third. So we end up with y equals 1 third times 12 is just 4x plus 24 times 1 third, which will be 8. And you know what our what our convenient value of x is going to be. Let's make x equal to 0. 
So we get a y equals 4 times 0 plus 8, or just 8. So our x1 is 0, our y1 is 8. We now need to substitute into the point slope form. F times x minus x1. Remember the when we have it in y equals form, we can easily find the slope by looking at the coefficient in front of x. So we have y minus y1 or 8 equals 4 times x minus 0. Now yeah, let's finish up with one more problem. I'll just make it up off the top of my head. Let's try negative 2y minus 5x equals 25. All right. I don't think we did any problems that had both a negative y and x term, so let's let's conclude with that. And you know what we're going to do. Let's take the additive inverse of the x term. So our x term is negative 5x. We need positive 5x on both sides. So we end up with negative 2y equals 5x plus 25. The multiplicative inverse of negative 2 is going to be negative 1 half. So everything has got to be multiplied by negative 1 half. Negative 1 half times negative 2 is y equals, which is the whole point of the multiplicative inverse, of course. Then negative 1 half times both these terms will give us negative 5 over 2. Right? Negative 1 half times 5 is negative 5 over 2x plus negative 25 over 2. Okay, so we end up with y equals negative 5 halves x minus 25 over 2. And this remembers our slope. We're going to use that later. Let's stick with our classic x equals 0 when we substitute in. So we'll say y equals negative 5 halves times 0 minus 25 over 2. Or y equals negative 25 over 2. And so our x1 is 0. Our y1 is negative 25 over 2. So all we have to do is now substitute it. Slope. y minus negative 25 over 2 will be y plus 25 over 2 equals our slope from up top here, x minus 0. All right, that's, um, that's it for converting standard form equations to point slope form. I hope you liked it. If you'd like more to see more tutorials or to do other practice problems or check out our worksheets and, and our interactive applets, go to mathwarehouse.com slash line. Thanks.